point to differentiate IBS which is a functional disease versus IBD which is a structural disease that in structural disease the patients would most of the times have nocturnal diarrhea. So in your practice if you have someone with chronic diarrhea and if he says that you raat mein baar baar utna padta hai, so it is not IBS. So don't ever think IBS in a, in a situation where there is nocturnal diarrhea, where there is weight loss, where there is anorexia. In that condition, you will have to think of a structural luminal disease like an IBD. So, so the, we will give an overview of IBD, we will talk about what are the current options and we will also talk about what are the emerging options. As we all know, IBD is basically a chronic inflammation of the GI tract and in IBD basically there are three diseases. Uh, here we have mentioned two. Uh, one is ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. We, we talk this in terms of a macroscopic colitis. This is a disease which you can see on a CT scan, you can see on a barium, you can see on an endoscopy. Other than this, as a specialist, we also see a third spectrum which is known as microscopic colitis, which we will not see on CT scan, which we will not see on endoscopy, which would only be diagnosed on biopsy. So it's a microscopic disease. We are not touching base on that today. So the, the presentation of um, IBD depends on which part of intestine is involved. And in most of the cases, it is a large intestine which is involved and hence the patients would most mainly present with diarrhea and it is usually bloody diarrhea. So most of the patients would either complain that they bleed per rectum or they would have blood stained stools. They would have abdominal pain, they book ne yogi, anorexia, uh, nausea, vomiting and some patients would also present with fever. Now these are the patients who would present to us as gastroenterologists but they would also present many times to other specialties. For example, the pulmonologist with, with ILD, they would present with the dermatologist with skin manifestation. So this disease, because it's immunological, it's not restricted to the GI tract but it's also manifest, it has extra intestinal manifestation. Uh, it may present to orthopedician with joint pain. Um, it may present to an ophthalmologist with iritis or uveitis and it can present to a dermatologist very well with any skin manifestations. And we also need to know that if someone is having an IBD, they need to be under continuous surveillance because they have an increased risk of colon cancer. So how would you establish this diagnosis of ulcerative colitis? There would be a subset of patients who would come to you. Aapke pas clinic pe patient aayega jo bolega mujhe paaj din se loose motion se mujhe blood aa raha hai. These are not the patients in which would you would suspect IBD because IBD means chronic chronic illness. It's a chronic diarrhea. So if someone is having persistence of loose stools for more than two weeks, or someone who would even say that more than four weeks, and someone who would continue to pass blood even for more than two to four weeks, those are the subset of patients whom whom you would probably consider a diagnosis of IBD. So diagnosis needs to be basically suspected clinically in patients who are having persistent bloody diarrhea for more than two weeks. Physical examination, like I said that most of these patients, almost one third of these patients would have an extra intestinal manifestation. If someone sees their eyes, if someone sees their skin, if someone sees their joints, if someone sees their joints, if someone sees their joints, then you can suspect that you have IBD. Once you have suspected this, what investigations can you carry? Definitely a stool examination is always helpful. That's something which all of you can do in clinical practice. It's not cost, costly. Uh, it would show you pus cells as well as RBCs. And blood examination. You should do a CRP and ESR. Because it's an inflammatory disease, you would, most of these patients would have a high CRP and ESR. The importance of this high CRP and ESR is also because you need to monitor these patients on subsequent therapy. You who can subject these patients uh, to imaging, at this time we don't rely on uh, a, cr a cross-sectional imaging like a CT or an MRI or barium for diagnosis. The diagnosis is basically dependent on endoscopy. So you, you, so you, you have to refer a patient to a gastroenterologist for an endoscopy uh, which could be a colonoscopy or, or an upper G endoscopy. A Crohn's disease for example would also involve can also involve the stomach or the small intestine, which will not be seen on a colonoscopy. Ulcerative colitis is a dominantly colonic disease. 
So we, you need to refer to a gastroenterologist and he needs to take a biopsy and prove that this is chronic colitis. I won't go much into pathophysiology, but nowadays, basically, we are seeing more and more of hygiene and, and the concept is that we are moving towards the hygiene hypothesis. Uh, in India, it was not in India, but it used to give protection against the inflammatory or immunological diseases. It used to give us protection against the immunological diseases, but as we are getting more hygienic, probably our microbiome is shifting to, to, to a like the West. And that's why we are having more and more immunological diseases, and IBD is one of them. So I don't think that this is all important at this time. So if you diagnose a patient with uh, IBD, whether it's ulcerative colitis or it is um, Crohn's disease, the first step to treat would always be antibiotics because most of these patients would exacerbate due to infective complications. And the most common antibiotics what we use in clinical practice is quinolones or, or cephalosporin plus an imidazole combination like ciproxyz or ofloxoz. But to maintain persistence of or separation of inflammation, these patients need to be given something known as bi amino salicylic acid. Um, it's available in market uh, under various names. Um, uh, Cadillac produces in the form of Mozart. Uh, you have Spicer Pharma Misatol. Uh, so it comes in various formulations. There are specific ASA preparations. There are ASA preparations which would be released in the large intestine. There are ASA preparations would be, which would be released in the small intestine and there are ARC preparations which will be released dominantly throughout the intestine. So you have to make a choice on, of the ASA preparation depending on the extent of involvement. If someone is having Crohn's disease who also has a small intestinal involvement or, or a gastric involvement along with a colonic involvement then we tend to use something called as pentasa. Um, but if someone is having just a colonic involvement uh, any of the usual ASAs would do well with them. There are a group of patients who would not respond just to ASAs and they would require something like corticosteroids. They are immunosuppressants. And we do use them especially if the patient is having a severe exacerbation. By severe exacerbation, I mean that if the patient is having more than six tools per day and if they are all bloody, along with systemic manifestations like fever or weight loss. There, there would be again a, a small subset of patients who would not respond to ASA or, or corticosteroids and in them you may need to supplement them with either methotrexate or azathioprine. Um, what is coming in a big way at this time is to target, this is known as targeted therapy. So TNF-alpha is one of the important biomediators in causing inflammatory bowel disease. And, and those patients who, who are refractory to 5-ASA or those who are refractory to steroids um, or azathioprine combination can be treated with um, these biologicals. But the problem in the Indian scenario is that these biologicals are costly. One injection would cost from anywhere from 30,000 to 70,000 to a gentleman. And the duration of therapy is not finite. So, so there are trials where people have used it as long as 3 years. Uh, on 8, 6 to 8 weekly basis, so it's not cost effective. So only option what we would have in clinical practice if someone is not responding to either ASAs or steroids or azathioprine or metorexel is probably surgery. Um, one, one interesting drug which has come into practice in, into market um, and it's also manufactured by Cadillac is uh, Haldi. Uh, Haldi ka, Viko Tarmarik, Haldi ka Chandan lagaya rakna. Uh, so, Haldi, Haldi uh, curcumin, uh, very interesting, so there, there is a lot of data and there is a lot of research basically to, uh, going on in curcumin. When I was in the US, um, we had a professor who used to work on curcumin to see whether it has effects in pancreatic cancer. Um, and curcumin has been used, um, it's an age old remedy, Ayurveda mein kafi achhi tarah istamal kiya hai. And I have been using actually raw curcumin in patients with ulcerative colitis. Um, I don't have a published data, but um, most of these patients would do well if they are not controlled by usual drugs. Giving curcumin, um, uh, 
पीसा हुआ करक्यूमिन वी हैव बीन यूजिंग फॉर फाइव इयर्स बट नाउ वी हैव करक्यूमिन इन क्लिनिकल प्रैक्टिस दिस इज अ फॉर्मुलेटेड करक्यूमिन इज अ प्योर फॉर्म ऑफ करक्यूमिन इट कम्स इन 50 मिलीग्राम कैप्सूल्स एट दिस टाइम देयर इज नो रैंडमाइजेशन अवेलेबल टू शो दैट यू ऐड करक्यूमिन देयर आर ओनली स्मॉल ट्रायल्स वी शो दैट इफ यू ऐड करक्यूमिन टू द यूजुअल प्रोटोकॉल ऑफ अल्सरेट कोलाइटिस द रिस्पांस रेट इंप्रूव्स बट वी डोंट हैव अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ रैंडम ट्रायल्स बट इन आवर सेटिंग where you can easily have healthy you can always always use this as an adjunctive therapy it's not the it's not the only therapy but it has to be used as an adjunctive therapy so this is available in market the only problem is that we don't know what is the bioavailability of curcumin at this time to humne kitna patient ko dene ke baad kitna patient absorb karta hai we don't know but in clinical practice we do see a good 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 response with with uh, curcumin uh thank you i think uh, that's where i end my talk here uh, in in the stipulated time or probably be, be below the stipulated time uh, thank you for your patient listening